Hello and welcome to the TMC Newsroom. Thanks for watching. My name is Rich Tarani. We're coming to you from San Jose. Today, our guest is David Van Everen, who is the VP of Product Management at Five9. Dave, how are you? Very good, thanks. Glad to be here. Good. Well, we're thrilled to have you as well. So uh, most people probably know Five9, the company's been around for uh, almost a decade. And, and um, I don't want to steal your thunder, so I'm going to let you tell us as if sure. I don't know your company. Sure. Well, what do you do? You know, Five9, <laughs> uh, we, we believe pioneered or helped pioneer the on-demand call center software sure. industry. Uh, we were one of the first entrants into that market back when software as a service was uh, still primarily new as a way of delivering software to uh, you know, enterprises and companies of all sizes. Uh, and so Five9 over the years has uh, emerged as one of the leading providers of that type of software. And to your credit, uh, there was a boom in, in uh, 2000 of companies that were similar. Uh, back then we called it software as a service and um, uh, I'm sorry, ASP is, is the term that we first started using in 2000. And I, I can't even fathom how many companies were wiped out in 2001 that uh, were in this space. And, and the fact that you're, you're a company that's about eight years old that's been doing this, and, and you're, you're one of the few companies that have made it through, like Salesforce.com and a few others. Uh, so congratulations. Well, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that really set us apart was our emphasis on providing entirely uh, you know, software as a service as our, our offering based on uh, software that we developed internally, uh, which was really geared for that type of a delivery model. So traditionally, a lot of the uh, vendors that came about during the, the early days of the ASP model were hosting software that may not have been best suited for delivery as a service. So issues around multi-tenancy and uh, even an emphasis on voice over IP, which was also kind of a burgeoning technology at the time were, uh, you know, t I think two critical cornerstones of, of the offering that we came out to market with. And now uh, just the whole cloud computing wave is, has been getting bigger and bigger, hasn't it, as it, as it approaches shore. It's, it's something that uh, I get asked about more and more by uh, readers of, of TMC and our viewers, and uh, it just shows that the interest is there, and I'm, I'm noticing that larger and larger companies are beginning to adopt the technology. Absolutely. I'd, I'd say that you know, if it was a wave, it would be a, t a tsunami uh, because its size is really huge and it's going to have profound lasting effects on the way that we use technology and software uh, in the future. So if we look at uh, the way we all act as consumers, uh, more and more of the, th the things that we interact with on a daily basis are uh, software that's delivered over the internet. Uh, it's a very familiar paradigm now. Uh, we use it for socializing, we use it for buying products uh, through popular websites for retailers, and uh, the enterprise is, um, you know, starting to also, uh, you know, take on some of those, the same uh, comfort levels with using software as a service over the internet, uh, and, you know, the software vendors have responded to concerns that the enterprise, um, you know, purchasers may have had over, uh, you know, things like uh, security and integration with applications that also exist in their enterprise and so on. So uh, let's let's step forward as companies start to put more and more of their uh, operations inside of the cloud. Let's say it's accounting, and then they're, then they're going to put uh, CRM, and they're going to put contact center, and then they're going to put some sort of social networking integration, social CRM. All of this stuff goes up in the cloud. Now I've got all these things in separate clouds, right? This cloud, that cloud, this cloud, this cloud, and then none of it talks to uh, the other clouds. How, how are we going to get all this stuff to, to speak with, with other parts of the cloud, to, to form one giant cloud? Well, that's, I think that's a really interesting and, and important question to ask, right? So one of the things that Five9 has done over the years is uh, emphasized the idea that you know, uh, software product isn't standalone. And uh, we felt that the best way that we could deliver on uh, customers' expectations for bringing all of those software products delivered via the cloud together would be to build out our own cloud computing platform for call centers. Uh, this is designed to allow uh, customers, partners, and developers 
to extend the capabilities of the 5.9 product offering and to integrate it with the other business applications that may be used uh, throughout the enterprise. So we've taken that platform and developed our own integrations to leading CRM offerings in the cloud, uh, major offerings such as Salesforce CRM, uh, NetSuite CRM right now, uh, and so on. And uh, we found that you know, this is really uh, the best way to provide uh, a contact center that can be part of a larger business process. Uh, so when we think about social networking and uh, you know, social CRM and things like that, uh, what that is is it's a, a channel that participates in a business process of serving customers. And uh, in order to integrate the call center with that channel, uh, you need to provide that type of a platform that can really bring it all together and, uh, you know, give that, you know, people, companies have talked for a long time about a 360 degree view of the customer. Right. Uh, and we think about, you know, a CRM vendor as holding uh, the best view of the history. And so what we do is contribute to, uh, contribute the call center view to uh, an overall view of the customer. So now I'm concerned because as a, as a customer, I am used to calling a company, giving my account number and then getting transferred to another department and then giving my account number again and then doing it so on and so forth, three or four times per call. Right. I, as a consumer, have begun to expect multiple iterations or multiple uh, repetition of the account number. Are you telling me that your software is going to take that away potentially? Absolutely. So we fix that for so sure. So we're going to have to, as consumers, we're going to have to get used to shorter phone calls <laughs> when we need service, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, I think you'll probably enjoy that. It's going to be very frustrating. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to hear. I'm glad you're helping consumers, and uh, it sounds like you're helping companies at the same time and uh, improving levels of customer service. Uh, thanks so much for being on the program. No problem. Great Thank talking you. with you. All righty.